All right, today we're joined uh, over a Zoom call by head men's basketball coach, James Page. Coach Page, uh, congrats, first of all, congratulations on being named the head coach of the men's basketball program after eight years or nine years. Eight years. Eight years eight. as an assistant. Um, yes, let's start off real quickly with just kind of like, what was it like getting the news that you were going to be stepping into that position? Was it, was it really exciting? Like kind of take me through your, your experience. Oh, definitely extremely exciting. Uh, something as an assistant coach for the past 16 years at the college level, um, something I've been working for for a very long time. And being with Tony for the last eight years, mentoring me for this position, this opportunity, um, last couple of years kind of saw the writing on the wall that this was going to be coming sooner than later. Obviously still was a surprise when it did happen, um, but was extremely excited. Um, feel I'm really ready for it. Fortunately, I had some great mentors. I played for some great coaches, been around some great coaches. So really excited to get the news. And of course, you know, things got a little wild and hairy for us right now um, with everything that's going on, um, but making the best of it and just trying to get everything ready for our guys to finish up the semester strong and then bring in a really great class and try to keep this thing rolling that uh, Tony started. So when, you, uh, just to clarify, you were stepped in as interim head coach last year for a 10 game stretch, if I'm mistaken, and you were seven and three in that time, including defeating CCSF, one of the top teams in the state year over year. Uh, when you officially, what was the first thing you did when you officially became the head coach of the program? Like, what was it to turn something on your desk? Was it to like change your email? What was it? Um, mainly I had, a, I had a meeting with, with the players, um, towards the end of the season, basically it was the season had ended. Tony had made the announcement to them. And my first act was to sit down and speak with them about, you know, kind of what the process is moving forward. You know, at the time we didn't anticipate, you know, the shutdown. Uh, so we kind of say, Hey, this is the off season. This is what it's going to look like. Things are going to be really different. Um, some stuff you'll be familiar with. It'll be the same. A lot of stuff will be very different. So, you know, Academics is going to be high priority as always. Just kind of wanted to get the ball rolling, started building future for our guys, letting them know what they're kind of getting themselves into because it is a different animal, a uh, different head coach, different philosophies, different, you know, things that I focus on. Um, so it was just uh, that initial meeting, kind of letting guys know this is where we are, this is where we're at. Um, and, and from that point, I had individual meetings with, with players talking about, you know, what, what they did well, what they didn't do well, what the next step would be, whether they're coming back, whether they're not, what they wanted to do, things like that. You know, understandably, when the head coach retires, some kids may not want to be around. Some kids might want to, you know, stick around. So it was just kind of that whole process of, of figuring out what the next step was for each individual. And then, you know, of course, got to change a couple of handles on, uh, you know, on Twitter and Instagram and things like that. Uh, let the world know um but besides that you know i think calling my parents uh, my dad was a was a coach his brother was a coach their dad was a coach so kind of giving them that news too it was pretty exciting i know they've been itching for me to get this opportunity for a long time as well so just letting the family know what was going on and uh you know starting to ce celebrate that good news with everybody that's awesome so let's talk a little bit about how the covid19 shutdown has affected basketball so you guys uh did not make it to the state level of the tournament this year Correct. which was suspended what do you have any idea what the three c2a's plan is will there be a champion for the 2019-20 season how is that going to be resolved it doesn't look like they're going to name a champion it looks like they're just going to leave things as they were obviously there's a number of schools who have made claims that they believe they were the best and that's totally well and good um, but without having a finished product on the floor i don't know how anyone could actually claim that uh, but it looks as if they're just going to leave it as a vacated, you know, no champion was crowned this particular year. Definitely devastating for all those uh, eight teams that were participating in the final eight. Uh, heart goes out to those players, those sophomores who didn't get a chance to end their careers the way maybe they wanted to or they deserve to. Um, but, you know, we're all kind of in that same boat that, uh, you know, we lost, you know, what we love the most, and that's basketball. Um, you know, for me, the biggest thing has been, you know, the NBA playoffs are about to be starting soon. There was no March Madness. It's like the best time of the year, in my opinion. I mean, nothing better than that first weekend of March Madness at Thursday, Friday, where there's just games all over the place and it's upset city. And then, you know, a couple of years back, I was at the Final Four and at the championship game when North Carolina knocked off Gonzaga. Uh, so, so missing that whole experience, missing the chance to sit at home and play hooky from work and watch basketball all day long and draw down plays and sets and, you know, talk to buddies and other coaches about what's going on and, you know, get involved. And, you know, that whole process was was a bummer for sure. Um, that's probably the biggest issue that's affected basketball. Um, no NBA. I'm a big Laker fan. 
I believe my Lakers had a shot uh, to, to, to win the championship, and that seems to be put on hold. So, you know, all those things that, you know, as a fan, uh, you miss and you love. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I can also put things in perspective and understand that like, the safety uh, and well-being of everyone is much more important than a game. So I'm glad that, you know, things have been put in place and, you know, the administration at the 3C2A level and at Cabrillo has given us, uh, you know, this chance to, you know, kind of take a step back, realize what's really important, take care of ourselves, our families, our loved ones, you know, and hopefully we can, you know, keep this curve from jumping up and we can get back to normalcy as soon as possible, but as a result of everyone's proactivity. So when during the regular season or during a traditional school year, even once the season has ended, you still have contact with the players regularly throughout the week. They yeah, check no in questions. with you. Yep. Every day, every day. It's, it's a requirement. Uh, come in the office just to say, hi, want to talk live, want to see how school's going, check in with you, how your family, things like that. Cabrillo college is much bigger than basketball. And we take a lot of pride in the family atmosphere that we're able to develop here. And so I, you know, ensure that those guys come in and know that, you know, they're loved and they're taken care of and they're getting the things they need and they have the resources available to them so they can be successful on the floor and off the floor. We're designing workout programs, weight programs, meal plans, things like that. So it's a pretty intricate process. Um, and it takes, you know, kind of daily check-ins uh, at, the, at the bare minimum. Have you ever worked as a personal trainer or strength conditioning coach in the past? Definitely. Um, I've done that. I played that role my entire time. I'm NASM certified um, as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, running the Wellness Education Center here on campus at Cabrillo has kind of given me that outlet as well. Uh, so I get a lot of do, do a lot of stuff in group settings and individual settings. And like I said, I've been the strength and conditioning coach at Cabrillo uh, for the past seven years. Um, my first year, I assisted uh, the other assistant coach who is now the head coach at Columbia College, Rob Hoyt. And they had a tremendous year this year. He's a really good coach and great friend of mine um, and helped me prepare myself for that and kind of was the guiding light on, hey, yeah, get NASM certified, get as educated as you possibly can. And as a result, you know, I've been able to do those things. What would you say has been the hardest part of this transition? And, and right off before you answer that, when Hunter Seymour announced that he had signed uh, to play Division One basketball next year for Providence, or no, I'm sorry, not Portland. Portland. Portland, sorry, flipped yeah. that in my no mind. That would have been a moment that I'm sure you would have loved to have been next to him for that we, I know as a sports information person, I would have loved for us to have been able to publicize that. Michaela Thornton recently signed a letter of intent to play. Kennedy Walters recently signed. Right. What has been the hardest part of this transition in terms of your separation from the players and how it's impacted your development cycle? Because up until this past season, the Coast Conference MVP, Coast Conference South MVP, eight consecutive years or nine out of nine consecutive years, correct? Nine. Yep. Nine. Sorry. One person won it twice. And that always exactly. throws me off. <laughs> uh, so for nine consecutive years, the top player in the conference came from Cabrillo that you worked with. How, how does that impact your ability to continue to develop this year's freshmen? And how does it impact your ability to develop the rising freshmen coming next season? Well, no questions. It, it impacted it and it's impacting all of us all over the state. Um, of course, I would love to be there to give Hunter a big hug. I know how much work he put in, um, how much time and, and energy and effort he put into the game and to improving himself and being a leader and, and you know, being rewarded for all that um, is awesome. It's what he came here for. It's what a lot of our guys come here for. They know that they're going to get developed. They're going to get better. They're going to get coached. They're going to get seen. They're going to get recruited. And they're going to leave with scholarships. And we've been great at placing kids all over the country at various levels uh, for my entire time here and even before I came. Um, so not being able to share that with Hunter um, physically uh, was disappointing, but I'm in contact with Hunter all day, every day. You know, as we talk right now, he's blowing up my phone right here next to me, uh, just checking in. Um, we have that kind of relationship, and, and that's part of that family thing that I was referring to uh, previously. Um, not being able to be on the floor with these guys is probably the biggest, uh, biggest you know, thing I'm missing. I miss being in the gym. I miss being around the guys. Uh, that's my favorite part of the year as an assistant coach. It's usually where I had um, the most impact was being able to be in the gym with these guys and work on their games, be really uh, involved in the skill development side of things. I've always taken a lot of pride in doing that. I'm helping guys develop. 
I think that's a, a time, effort, and energy thing, and I'm more than happy to do so. I'm sure my wife wished I wouldn't do it nearly as much and maybe came home a few uh, nights a little bit earlier, but you know, that's a sacrifice we make for doing what we love, and I definitely miss that. Um, I think it's a big part of the guys we've had over the years. Rarely have we had a guy come in and was an MVP right off the bat. It's usually taken some time to develop. And even the guys who were um, MVPs, as like Linton Eccles, was he was an MVP as a freshman. The the incoming part of his his career was huge. He came in and had to lose 50 pounds. And it took him maybe till probably the halfway point of the season, right when we got into league, for him to really start to blossom. And that took a lot of time and energy on the floor and put in you know, hours and hours and hours after practice, before practice, in the weight room, on those treadmills, to getting him in that uh, position. And so not being able to do that with these guys, with the guys returning, you know, the John Elefantes and Alphonse Alfreds and the Brandon Harmons and Myron Dews and guys like that, not being able to do that who are going to be impact players for us next year is definitely limiting, um, you know, their ability to grow and develop. Now, I know they're hardworking guys and they're doing the best they can. They're running um, in their apartments. They're, you know, shooting where they can. Their ball handling drills are, are going on a daily basis. Um, but everyone all over the state's impacted this way. And we're all just doing the best we can uh, to make sure our kids are taken care of. And most importantly, they got a lot of time to work on their academics. And that's always the most important part. They're student athletes, they're not athlete students. And so they get a chance to kind of pad those academic stats right now. A lot of time. So we're hoping those GPAs are as good as they've ever been. And, you know, when we get back to normal, they can start putting that work back in. Awesome. Coach, before I let you go, uh, I have two more questions left. The first is, what are you watching when you're not watching game film to pass the time? We've heard Tiger King from some people. Uh, that seems to be really popular. What, what is the, what are you, what are you hooked on? I'm hooked on devs, if you've seen that on FX. I haven't seen it. Um, I'm on Money Heist right now. Um, that's kind of my getaway. Um, pretty good stuff. Italian um, show, right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's good. Uh, I, I liked it. It's, I'm kind of a, a movie guy and a show guy because I'm so enthralled with basketball. My mind rarely shuts off. So throwing on something like that for an hour a day or so like that really kind of gets me, you know, centered a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge TV guy outside of basketball. Um, I'm one of those people that I, I'm drawn up plays at the dinner table and I'm texting in the middle of conversations with my wife to recruits and players. It's just a go, go, go thing. It's something that you know, I think any good coach knows that it's something that's always on your mind. But yeah, I, I try to sneak away at least you know once a day and maybe sneak in an episode of Money Heist right now. So that's my go-to. Nice. And uh, what's one skill that you are developing or learning for the first time? For example, our vacuum broke. And so I taught myself how to take apart a vacuum and nice. put a new belt on it. <laughs> nice. That's good stuff. Um, I think more than anything is, is learning how to um, deal with this whole Zoom life, you know, uh, doing a lot of work with our players on this regard. We've had a lot of meetings coaches wise throughout the Coast Conference. Um, through our um, athletic department, um, meeting with our, my students in the wellness center this way. So really transitioning to online education. And that's probably been one of the biggest things as well as trying to build the social media aspect of our program. That's another aspect that, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy and I'm 40. I'm not a huge social media dude, but I know this is the, the wave of the future. And if you want to be good at, at this recruiting and, and be connected with kids that you need to have that footprint. So kind of developing that more uh, technological side of things that I've, you know, definitely not done much of in the past. Awesome. Thank you, coach. Coach, we want to interview you at least one more time. We'd love to hear all about how you got started in the game, where you played your game, where you learned how to coach, what it was like working for Coach T. There's so much else we want to get into, but thank you so much for making this time for us. My pleasure. Today.